Right, hang everyone. So we've got another example. So let's find the equation of a tangent. So I want to differentiate it and sub in the point. Right, so let's have a look. So x squared becomes a 2x, that's all right. The 4xy, if I imagine with the product rule, so first bit is a 4x, second bit is a dy dx, because it's taking it differentiated. Then I've got second bit is a y, times by the first bit differentiated, which becomes a 4. So I'm just going to write the 4y down straight away. Then I've got minus 6y, so I'm going to say it's a dy by dx, is equal to 0. Now, because the 2x and the 4y are already positive, I'm just going to leave them there, and I'm going to take over the dy by dx bits. So it doesn't really matter, does it? So then imagine that you take out the dy by dx as a factor, and you've got 6x minus 4x in a bracket, that's oh, sorry, 6y minus 4x, and that gives me an expression for the gradient. Well, I want to find it at the point P, which is 4, 2. So x is 4, y is 2. Uh, x is 4, y is 2. Um, so what have I got? 16 on the top, minus 4 on the bottom. It's going to give me minus 4 out as an answer. There. There we go. And that's the gradient of my tangent at the point 4, 2. So I need to use m is minus 4 at p 4, 2. So I've got y minus 2 minus 4 x minus 4. And that will do. If I wanted to expand it, it's minus 4x plus 16 plus 2 plus 18. Oops, if I wanted to expand it. So that's part A done there. Part B says given that the tangent to the curve at point Q is parallel, ugh, so given that the tangent to the curve at point Q is parallel to the tangent at P, so what does that tell us? It tells us that the gradient must be minus 4. There. It tells us that the gradient must be minus 4. So I've got something for dy by dx. This is part A. Now, the, uh, the way I've done it is slightly different to the way the path does it. It's exactly the same, they just didn't rearrange it. So my gradient is minus 4. So minus 4 is 2x plus 4y over 6y minus 4x. Take this bottom line up. I mean, I could have actually divided that whole function through by 2, couldn't I? Uh, but it doesn't matter. It'll all cancel out in a minute. So we've got minus 24y plus 16x, 2x plus 4y. Take the x's over 14x, take the y's over 28y, uh, x is 2y, so shall I do a half x or leave it as x is 2y? I might leave it as x is 2y, and this time instead of replacing the y, replace the x, because I can do that, because we're multivariable. Right, so the x's become a 2y. I'm going to watch me for getting this right now. Uh, so I've got 4y squared plus 8y squared minus 3y squared is 36. 9y squared is 36. y squared is 4. y is plus or minus 2. Ta da! Now I know that p was plus 2. So I know that P and Y is plus 2. So Q must have Y as minus 2. If that's the case, if I use that equation and the coordinates of Q must be minus 4, minus 2. Job done. That is really, really nice. It looks massively messy, but 
it's not that bad if you follow it through. So there you go. Get a bit of a wiggle. That's quite nice. That. A lot of big bad algebra. That's what we want in our lives. There's one for you to do, um, which is very very messy. Ooh. I might just show you that and let you botch your way through it. Mm. Faffy, faffy it is. It's not hard, it's the same method, it just looks harder. Because you've got to remember that tan goes to secret squared and cos goes to minus sine with the long letter. There, then got some consolidation, so we're done.